Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode number 97 is tips for a better result. If you're the kind of gal who doesn't fix things, if you can't see the error riding on a horse at midnight, this episode is not for you. You want better product? This is a good one to watch. But before we get to the episode, I want to talk about reordering fabric. We talked last time, I think, about the digital printing and how the um, fabric looks different after you quilt it. Another consideration in fabric is that repeat purchases of the same fabric sometimes is not exactly the same. I've got a couple of examples here to show you. And I can you can see that these two fabrics are not exactly the same. They are indeed the same fabric. Now, this these two examples I'm showing you are from Benertex, but by no means is this the only um, fabric line I have where I reorder a fabric and they're just not exactly the same. That was a gold fabric. Here's a green. These are the exact same item number, exact same color number. And this one, the new one or newer one we got in is much darker than the older one. So if you had the older one and thought you could get more of the same color, you would be disappointed that they don't match exactly. Some companies do better than others. Just like I talked about Moda with the digital printing. If you order a Dimples fabric from Andover and you've had this one and you need more of it, if you reorder it, you get exactly the same thing, no matter when you order it. You could order it 10 years later and you are still, if it's still the same color number, it's still in print, it will match exactly. At least that's my experience. This is just something to be aware of, that you hope that it will be exactly the same. People talk about dye lots. I think of dye lots in yarns, in knitting. It, you need the same dye lot to match. But to me, if you order a dimples, a certain number black, and you order it again 10 years later, it should be the same color. That's just my opinion. Something to be aware of. Let's get to today's episode. I have a few quick tips for a better result. And the one that we talk over and over and over again about is an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. In fact, Mary B just had a video out talking about um, not using a scant quarter inch seam allowance, using an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And that sounds exactly what I've said for the last two years on these videos, is test your seam allowance, measure, and make sure it's correct. Now, one thing that she showed in her video, and we will provide the link for it so you can watch it yourself, is she took painter's tape stacked up several layers of it and put it on the bed of her machine and measured a quarter inch from where the needle hit um, the ruler to where she put the edge of the tape. Now that's a good temporary result. Where I differ from Mary B is, to me that's not a long-term solution. If you have a top-loading bobbin, Every time you change your bobbin, that tape has to come up. And then you have to take your ruler again, measure a quarter inch, put the tape back on. Then are you going to do another test each time you run out of a bobbin? How about when you go from a single hole plate to a zigzag plate? Um, even if you have a, a, a front-loading bobbin, um, you, you would have to then remark your um, tape and then test again. To me, that's not a good solution. To me, the solution is to have the right equipment 
that you know where the quarter inch mark is on your machine. Now, our machines, as you may remember, I am a Bernina dealer, and we have quarter inch feet. This is just one example of the quarter inch foot that you can use that to watch where your quarter inch seam allowance is. We also have on our plates, I'm going to try to hold this steady so that you can see it. Right there is a quarter inch mark. In fact, that's the mark I look at when I'm sewing. And there are also quarter inch marks clearly on our trays, uh, the tables, that give you the accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So while I don't have a problem with somebody using the painter's tape to mark your quarter inch seam allowance. I think it just makes way too much room for error of having to pull it off, put it on, pull it off, put it on, and getting it accurate each and every time. So my ultimate solution would be know where the quarter inch is on your machine. The second thing I want to talk about is um, what I see on the long arm all the time. As I've got a quilt that I'm quilting, all of a sudden I see a pleat or I see an open seam. And if you've pressed your work, you should have been able to see those to fix them. But let's say you are have a piece in front of you and you're pressing it. This is a unit in your work. Now, you may not be able to see this very well, but this is a pleat right here. Right there is a pleat. So what you want to do is rip it, and then once you get the, the pleat released, well, of course we're doing it on camera, and it's always easier off camera, right? Let me just get this open. And then what you want to do is you want to distribute the bulk of that pleat so that there's no longer a pleat. Hope that makes sense. All right, so now my pleat's released. So what I want to do now, I think I want to rip just a tidge more. because. You want to distribute the bulk. So what I would do in this case is take pins. Now again, these have to be pins you can sew over. If you have big fat pins, this is not going to work. But I'm just going to put in pins so that any excess fabric is distributed evenly across the open part. So I would now go to the sewing machine and sew this down, and I should not have a pleat anymore because the bulk, there's a little, little excess here, a little excess here, and should be good to go. Where I experience this often in my own work, you all know that I love strip piecing. So I've always got pieces like this that I'm putting together. And I've got my intersections pinned, and I look, and you might be able to see here, there's a little excess here on top. It's like a little bubble up here. It's got a little extra fabric here. So when I have extra fabric, this one isn't too egregious. You know, sometimes it's way worse. I might have three, four pins in here to distribute the bulk. But that's, again, what I would do is go ahead, pin, and, and that's how I'd take it to the sewing machine. Each intersection and then a place where it needed some extra help. I go sew it together and then press it and check to make sure that it's all good, that there's no pleats. And if there's pleats, I rip and try again. 
but this should be fine. It was just a tiny little bit of extra fabric. But like I said, sometimes it's more. You know, as hard as we try to accurately cut, accurately sew each and every time, it's, it's never always perfect. There's always going to be a few little spots that aren't as good as you would like. And there's solutions to fix them like this. But don't forget, skinny, skinny, skinny pins. The last thing I want to show you today is grooming your quilt. I can't tell you how many quilts I have on the long arm that um, have just threads and threads and threads on the back and threads sticking out all through the front. When I'm pressing, when I'm pressing my pieces and I see threads, I get rid of them right then and there. I don't want to be finishing this table runner and having this thread hanging here. Now, sometimes you will pull it and it doesn't come out. You could go ahead and clip it, but then it's still there in that seam. What I like to do is flip the piece over and open up this seam, and there it is, I think. Pull it out from this side. And it's gone. No longer here. If you tug on a thread that you're trying to get out and it's not coming out, pull it out from the other side. And, you know, you're never going to get every single one of your threads off the front, every single one of your threads off the back. But certainly those that you see, go ahead and get rid of them so that when your project is done, it looks beautiful and you're happy to give it to whomever it's made for. I hope you like these few little tips that I gave you today. I hope you learned something from it. Please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, happy sewing.